Okay, 129, doing some office hour problems. We're, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at 5.1, number nine, number one, number nine, number 12, number 16. Then we're gonna hop over to 5.2, even though it's not due till Monday, um, number four and number 12D. We'll look at all of number 12, but we're gonna focus on 12D. Okay, now, Number one is a titration problem. The reason I want to make sure and take some time to look at this is because we have a midterm coming up, and that midterm is going to be pretty much all buffers and all titrations. So that's what it's going to be focused on. What is going on here with this wire? That wire used to be someplace else. That's weird. Someone was in my office doing things. In any case. Um, Number one, can you go ahead and tell me what the problem is? Yeah, so it says there's 338.7 milliliters of a 0.5 kilase hydro hydrocyanic acid with a Ka of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. And the solution is titrated by 0 0.573 potassium hydroxide. Now your individual numbers for the concentrations and volumes might be a little bit different, but here's what we've got going on. We're doing a titration. This problem, oh, I did this one. I don't remember when I did this one. But we're doing a titration, and um, we just have to think through the different bits that we can do easily and the different bits we have to do more difficultly. So of course, I always start with just drawing a simple titration curve. I calculate my equivalence point volume, my midpoint volume, and my midpoint pH, because I can do those relatively easily. I can get my equivalence point volume by doing 338.7 times 0.528 divided by 0.573, and I'm going to get 312.1 to my equivalence point. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I get 156. 0 0.05 my midpoint. I take the negative log of the Ka, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10, and I get 9.21, 9.2076, 9 9.21 to my midpoint pH. Uh, that probably answers, if I remember correctly, oh, we did this one like all together, right? Did, did we do this one? During office hours. Right, during office hours. Yeah, OK. And then I think I changed the values. I tried doing it, and I just like failed. OK. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of where I always start. And if I remember correctly, the problem asks us to solve like the initial, some point before the midpoint, the midpoint, some point after the midpoint, and the equivalence. Yeah, the Well, should we do all of these the easy way that we now know how to do them? OK. So initial and equivalence, we have to do special things for those. This is like 100% HA. So I can just treat that like a weak acid. This is 100% A minus. So I can just treat that like a weak base. So both of those are going to be for the first one is going to be Ka equals x squared over the initial concentration of Ha, or the starting concentration of Ha. And then let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then point 0.5 is going to be Kb is equal to x squared divided by the concentration of A minus, where we have to do dilution. Right, and it turns out the equilibriums that we calculate for those are always the same. And so we can finally, we're at a point, hopefully, where we're comfortable enough that we can say, look, if I set up the equilibrium, this point has essentially no stoichiometry. It's all HA. This point, we have to do stoichiometry to get it to all A minus, which is why we need that dilution step. But we know it's going to be all A minus in solution, so it's just going to look like a weak base in solution. And I know what my equilibrium table for a weak base in water looks like. And I always get that. 
So I can go ahead and I can calculate both of those points actually relatively easily now. The, the equivalence point is one that students have a lot of trouble with. Um, but if you think about it in terms of this percentage idea of all weak acid, all conjugate base, it's just a, it's just a conjugate base in water. And we've been doing that calculation for three weeks. So we should be able to calculate that one. Now, everything through the buffer range, we can use pH equals pKa plus log of whatever my stoic is. So let's go ahead and look at the stoichiometry and see what we can, what we can drop into there. My stoichiometry is going to be whatever my HA is plus some hydroxide going to A minus. Uh, for this problem, I'm going to go ahead and calculate my total moles, which is going to be the 338.7 times 0.528. And I'm going to have 178.8 here. I'm going to have some moles of hydroxide. I'm putting it generically. I'm putting it generically. I feel like I should have switched colors again. I'm putting it generically because I want to come up with an equation where I can solve all three points relatively quickly. And this is also what we were doing when we were solving buffer capacity, right? Buffer capacity would be like solving that point and that point. But all three of those blue points in the middle and both of those orange points on the end are all going to have, since they're all in the buffer range, two of them are on the very edge of the buffer range, but still the buffer range, they're all going to have the same stoichiometry equilibrium and the only difference between them is how much hydroxide is in each one. So this is my start, my react, my excess. I know because I'm before the equivalence point that my moles of hydroxide are limiting. And I know because of the stoichiometry that my moles of hydroxide goes to zero. Every mole of hydroxide converts the weak acid into conjugate base. This is going to be 178.8 minus moles of OH. Now, with the practice we've been doing in class, we can say, ah, here's my stoichiometry. This is my excess point of the stoichiometry. I can drop that into there. And now I'm going to have, for this particular problem, I'm going to have a setup that can solve all five of those points real quick if I wanted to. I have to do something different for the initial and the equivalence, but anything in the buffer region, we can start doing this thinking. So I'm going to replace this thing. My stoic is going to be my, my moles of conjugate base, which is equal to my moles of strong base, divided by my remaining moles of weak acid, which is going to be my starting moles of weak acid minus how much strong base I put in. So that's my stoichiometry dropped in. Now I can just do this for the different pHs. Or I think this problem, instead of asking us to solve for pHs, it gives us the amount of OH in each one, right? It gives you like a volume. Yeah. I can take that volume of OH times the concentration, and I can drop that in my moles of OH. Okay. So let's do one of those together and see how it looks, shall we? Okay. Um, which one do you want to do? There is one that asks what's the pH after adding. It's 1.4.9 milliliters of sodium. Let's do that one. So we got to do some thinking. I'm going to get rid of this water because we don't really care about it anyway. We're going to take that 74.9 milliliters of hydroxide. We're going to multiply that by 0.573 molarity, and that's going to get me my moles of hydroxide. So the cool thing about this equation, once we do the stoichiometry table, this works for, you know how everyone thinks that like we were doing two different problems this whole time, to find the volume or find the pH? This thing does both, because they're all the same problem. Right? It's that idea of, oh, wasn't that the chair thing? No, that was the equilibrium. So, okay, so let's go ahead and do this. 74.9 times 0.573. I'm going to get 42, ooh, 42, ah, 42.92 millimoles. 
I'm going to plug that 42.92 in here. Forty-two point nine two. Forty-two point nine two. Solve. That's it. Right, and that should get us a pH. Let's go ahead and plug numbers in and see how we do. Um, we've got our K nine point two one. So let me go ahead and do this. Forty-two point nine two divided. Well, let me do this. One seventy eight point eight. Minus 42.92 is equal to 358.8. Inverse that times 42.92. And I get 0 0.3518, 3519. I take the log of that. I get a negative 0.5. I add that. I do uh, 9.21 plus that log, which is going to be minus 0.5.9, 9.21. And I get a pH of 8.71. That's it. Now, I say that's it, like it's nothing. It's taken us five weeks of work to get to this point. Everything we were doing, understanding, I know it feels like the solids were a completely different problem. Right? That feels like it, this feels like it's something different. But getting used to X is small approximation, getting used to equilibrium tables, getting used to stoichiometry and equilibrium. All of that was leading up to us being able to deal with weak acids in equilibrium and stoichiometry. And now that we're at that point where we're like, okay, everyone was doing okay with the simple like weak acid and a little bit of strong base. And I'm like, okay, now let's do it for lots of things all at once, doing an entire titration curve. And let's do it backwards where I tell you the pH that we want to get to and you tell me the volume. But this equation, well, without the stuff plugged in like that, that equation works both directions. Should we do more, or do you think that's enough for you to kind of do? Could I just get, like, a lot of your, like, clarification of which number is which on the curve? Like, oh, wait, what do you mean which like, number is um, which? Like, part make, A, B, C, D? Or I'm just, I want to make sure I'm not getting, like, certain, like, equivalence point versus, like, specific. Oh, oh right, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, you tell me, what's this one? Initial or pH? Yeah, initial or I like to call it the start or the beginning. So so we don't get it confused. Like, what color do I want? And that's the one where it's just with the KA and K. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's just a weak acid in solution. <laughs> right? So that is like the calculations we were doing on the like third day of class. <laughs> Just weak acid in water. And then the 312.1, is that the volume of the equivalent mm -hmm. one? That's going to be this one. Again, we're outside of the buffer range, so we don't use this whole nonsense, or this whole much sense. <laughs> Right? We don't use this thing because this, this depends on having a weak acid and a conjugate base ratio. X is small approximation. Water is negligible. There's a bunch of approximations that go into this that are not valid at the equivalence point. They're not valid at the initial point. As long as, and they're not valid where you see this kind of like curvy bit. They're not really valid there either. That's why we have to have these orange marks to be like, this is the range where it is valid. So there's a, there's a section here that red marker go? There's a section here. Oh, there's that. I've been looking for that pen for like two weeks. Sorry. It was up here. There's a section here that we essentially never do calculations for because you have to solve the quadratic to do calculations there. There's a section here we never do calculations for because you have to solve the quadratic to do calculations there. Could I ask you to do that? I mean, I could. But I wouldn't do it on a test or, or a quiz or an exam or something like that. It would be like a, oh, let's just see if we can do it type for fun problem. I know my idea of fun is a little bit strange. <laughs> okay. So that is how we would approach number one. Now, this is different. If you were in office hours on Monday when I was doing this, sorry, I didn't record it for those of you at home. If you were here on, in office hours on Monday when I was doing this, I did it a very different way. Because I was still doing it stoichiometry, equilibrium, stoichiometry, equilibrium, stoichiometry, equilibrium. 
But since Monday, we've gotten so comfortable with this idea of using Henderson Hasselbach to skip the equilibrium table and dropping our stoichiometry in for that ratio that we can now skip, like all of our titration problems can be done much faster. All of our buffer problems can be done much faster when we get comfortable with something like this. Don't rush into it. Don't start just trying to shoehorn this equation in for every situation. Because that's usually what happens. People are like, this thing does everything. It's like, no, 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 it does a particular range of particular problems. Make sure you're, if you still need to do stoichiometry equilibrium a few more times until this makes sense to you, keep doing stoichiometry then equilibrium. But do it with a mind of, how does it relate to this thing? How is it the same? Am I comfortable skipping all of that, those steps and just jumping to this? Saves a bunch of time. With that in mind, should we look at number nine? Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at number nine. I'm going to erase all of this. What's number nine say? Um, it, it's the one where it gives you pH and you have to find volume. Oh, I need more details than that. Oh, you're getting it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you want to give your values? Or oh, I don't care. Okay. Can. Go for it. Uh, volume of 0 0.57 HNO2. Uh, volume or molarity? Sorry, molarity. My, my apologies. No worries. Wait, it would be uh, what volume of? And then should be added to 500 milliliters of 0.52 molarity uh, potassium nitrate. So that the, or nitrate, yeah, is, or it's uh, KNO2. I'm sorry, I'm fucking this up. Yeah, KNO2 and the pH resulting in 3.45. <laughs> okay, we want pH equals 3.45. Oh, I see why this is confusing so many people. So we've got 0.57 molarity, KNO2 added, and we're adding that to 500 milliliters of... Wait, hold on. I think it's the... It says for the volume of 0.57 molarity, HNO2 should be added oh, to. Oh, HNO2 is here. Right, 500 milliliters of uh, 0.52 molarity KNO2. KNO2. Once again, my apologies. Okay, so what? This looks like a totally different problem from anything we've ever done. However, guess what? the exact same thing as everything we've already done. Now, I was framing it in a little bit of a different way, but I'm going to go through my same thinking, right? If I think about this, this isn't really a titration curve uh, in the way that we usually titrate, but here's what I know. Um, I can take HNO2 and I can find the Ka value for it. I can find that midpoint. Uh, that is 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4, 7.1 times 10 to the minus 4. I uh, take the log of that. 3.14. So I know the midpoint here is 3.14. Yeah, 3.15. And I know that's going to be where I'm 50%. That's where I'm 50-50, right? Half HNO2, half KNO2. Now this one, I want to get to a pH of 3.45. So I want to be you know, not very far past, but like over here. So just from my thinking about it, I'm going to, I think I'm going to want, well, let's say 60, 40. Right, I think I'm going to want to be a little bit past. I want to be 60% NO2 minus 40% HNO2, right? I want to be a little bit more basic. So I want a little bit more of my conjugate basin solution. That's my thinking. How am I actually going to solve this rather than just doing my thinking? Well, this is where it's not a typical titration, so we're not going to think about it, right? So it's still an equilibrium problem in the buffer range. So I'm going to have pH is equal to pKa plus log. And I'm going to have my concentration of NO2 minus up here. I'm going to have my concentration of HNO2 here. But I also know it is equal molar. Right, so sorry, not equal molar. I know that when it's a ratio of concentrations, since it's in the same total volume, I can replace this and say that's going to be like my moles of NO2 minus, 
divided by my moles of HNO2. Now, I already know my moles of uh, NO2 minus. That's going to be equal to 500 times 0.52. Like 250? Right, so I've got that 260 millimoles for the top of the fraction. I've got the pH. I've got the pKa. Can I solve for the number on bottom? Yeah. Right, the reason this confuses people is because everyone tries to shoehorn that equation and they're trying to do some stoichiometry in this. But this is, you, if you remember in class today, someone was asking, is it always a strong base being added? And I was like, no. If you're adding conjugate pairs together, you can add directly to the point of interest without actually doing a titration. So this is one of those examples. What we'll find is when we look at our equation, we essentially have one, two, three, four different variables that we could solve for. All of our buffer problem calculations are going to have three of those values given to us, and we've got to solve for the missing one. In this problem, we're given pH, we're given pKa, we are given the NO2 minus, we just have to solve for the HNO2. Can do. Go ahead and calculate that, see what you get. I'm going to check in with 124 real quick. Let's go ahead and do this math together. So I do molarity times volume to get my millimoles. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in there. Right. I've got that 260 up there. Now again, uh, I said this while I wasn't recording. I tried to make this problem easier by reducing the math, by not doing any stoichiometry. But because we have gotten so used to doing problems with stoichiometry, it stumps, it stumps students when I try to make it easier. So I've got my 260 there. I know my target pH is 3.45. And I know my pKa value is 3.15. So now I just have to solve for that, that moles of HNO2 and then turn it into volume. So I'm going to go ahead and do 3.45 minus 3.15. I'm going to get 0.3 is equal to the log of 260 over n. Now that I only have one n value, I'm just getting rid of my subscripts. A little bit sloppy of me, but I hope you're all comfortable with that. I do 10 to the power of 0.3 is equal to... This one is positive, is equal to 1.995, which is equal to 260 over n. So I do a little flip-flop, and I say n is equal to 260 divided by 1.995, which is equal to inverse times 260, uh, 130.31 millimoles. Last step, I take that 130.31 millimoles. I divide by the 0.57 molarity. Cancel moles and give me liters, or in this case, milliliters. Divided by 0 0.57, 228.6. Oh my god. Did you get it? Yes, I got it. That okay. Was, okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Now, does this one have the uh, change values as an option? Yes. Change the values and do it again. Not right now. <laughs> when I'm fair, studying. Fair. fair. <laughs> right. But the, the thing is, and yeah, not right now, but like in a couple hours. Because one of the things that's really important to realize is when I'm at the board doing stuff and I'm kind of like stepping through it, it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm kind of talking through what's going on. When you got to pull that out of your head from your memory, unless you've done it a bunch of times, 
it's a slow process and it's a flawed process. So it's the repetition of like, well, let me try that again. Do I really know how to do it? I'm curious, like, like what some key terms are that like uh, know that like I don't have to do so like amateur because like so in that, like in that problem, like, how do I specifically know like? So the thing we're looking for, right? And and this is this is the same thing that I've been saying since the beginning of the quarter is, what's in the beaker? What chemical reactions can happen? What equilibrium can happen? So when we started, so I knew there was going to be something weird going on with this problem or something not what we've done in class as much with this problem because there was no strong base. There was no strong acid. Oh, it was a weak yeah. acid with its conjugate base. Right. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's not a chemical reaction. That's just going to be equilibrium. That's just like the ratio between the two of them. Like. Yeah. Right? And so it's that... that, that two made me think it was a different... Like a different molecule. So then I thought it was base, and like that's why I tried doing story. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, so it's recognizing that KNO2 is going to disassociate into NO2 minus, and then we've got a weak acid with its conjugate base. Okay. That's, and yeah. so... And it said that on the top of the problem, and I just totally yeah. went over my head. So I did it that way. I got a number, but it's different than the number that it said on my end that was correct. Are, are your numbers the same? No, I did it with my numbers, and it's significantly different than the number that I got on my end that was correct. I don't know. Try. Did you ever I'm hit? Did you ever hit? Um, uh, generate new numbers. No, because I got it right. Generate new numbers and try it. Okay. And I might have to. You know, I said it's using the correct stuff in the code, but I've got to double check and make sure that it's not like populating yours with weird numbers. Okay. Because I, yeah, I having, I don't know why it's not Yeah, so, so try generating new numbers and see, see if you can get it with the new numbers. Okay. So that might be something that's, a, that's weird on the back end, but um, I can also look at your work. But So if I were to, um, like if, if the problem asked for, like ha gave those same uh, values, but it was like, like strong acid, weak base, or vice versa. Yeah. Then, then you go to like stoichiometry because stoichiometry, that's going to be a reaction that happens. Yeah, and this okay. this is the same difficulty we've been dealing with since like the second week of the quarter, right. which is what mathematical process do I actually do? You notice since the beginning of the quarter, we've been doing the same math all six weeks. We've been yeah. doing stoichiometry, we've been doing equilibrium. This stuff is a little bit easier than what we started with because there's no like cube roots or anything. Right. But it's all still stoichiometry and equilibrium. And the part that is most difficult is what's the math I'm actually doing? Like what am I trying, like what am I trying to describe? What math do I do to describe these things? And that's back to the that that four thought, that four-step thought process of what's in the beaker? What chemical reactions can happen? What equilibrium phenomena can happen? What do I need to do to figure this out? Okay. And so this one, as soon as I see, oh, it's, it's nitrous acid and, and nitrite anion, I'm like, that's a weak acid and it's conjugate base. Nothing strong, no significant stoichiometry, only equilibrium, which is why my, my Henderson-Hasselbach equation just looks like the Henderson-Hasselbach equation no weird like additions or subtractions inside the parentheses because there's no stoichiometry happening. Right. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Where's Janelle? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. All right. It's better. Should we take a look at number 12? Okay. Let's see. Okay, number 12. Oh, okay, if I erase everything, everyone good? Number 12, who wants to give me a read of number 12? Um, I can read it. Thanks. Uh, buffer contains 0 0.260 molar of weak acid and 130 molar of conjugate base. What is the pH change after 0. Oh, this one. Yeah, 0.0015 mole of barium hydroxide. Is 
added to 0 0.110 liters of their solution. Okay, this one's weird. And um, it's weird because you don't know the Ka value. So how the heck do you do this? So we're essentially going to have this situation. Uh, notice this is, uh, there's some stoichiometry going on. But essentially what's going to happen is we're going to have pH 1 equal to pKa plus log of ratio 1. And then we're going to have pH 2 equal to pKa plus log of ratio 2. Right, and the problem is I don't know the, the pKa's, and I've got to figure out what ratio 1 and ratio 2 is. Ratio 1, I know it's this. But without the pKa, I can't tell you what pH that is. Ratio 2, I have to do some stoichiometry to figure out. But what we can do is we can say delta pH is equal to pH 2 minus pH 1, which is going to be pKa plus log of ratio 2 minus pKa minus log of ratio 1. Yeah? pKa cancels. So then we get delta pH is equal to log of ratio 2 minus log of ratio Thank 1. You. you bet. See ya. So let's go ahead and plug in the bits we know into this and see what we can figure out. Delta pH is going to be equal to log. This one, ratio 2, is going to be after some stoichiometry. So this is going to be moles of A minus plus moles of OH minus. This is going to be moles of HA minus moles of A minus. I'm sorry, moles of OH minus. Are you OK with that? Right? My weak, my strong base is going to react my weak acid and turn it into conjugate base. I can write down the stoichiometry table if I need to, and I did the stoichiometry table in my head. Okay. You just go over verbally instead of writing it down. Just I'm going to write it down. Okay. I'll just do a quick. I'll do a quick. HA plus OH minus goes to A minus plus H2O. In this situation, I've got both things starting, so I've got some moles of A minus that I'm starting with. Remember how I said it's not always going to be zero? This is one of the situations where it's not zero. My moles of HA here, also not zero. My moles of OH minus, also not zero, also given. So I could plug in numbers for all three of these things. I did it really generically here. Let's plug in some numbers for these. My moles of OH minus, it's going to be 0 0.003. Why is it not 0 0.0015? Two, two hydroxides for each barium hydroxide. My moles of HA is going to be the 0 0.26 times 110. 0 0.26 times 110. That's going to be 28.6. My moles of A minus is going to be the 0 0.13 times 110. 0 0.13 times. It's going to be 14.3. Um, ooh, I almost messed up bad. Because I did these in millimoles, that one's in moles. So i got to turn that into three. And I also put this as molarity instead of moles. Just making sure you uh, multiply the concentration by the total volume that it said. Yep. In. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Now, 3 is obviously my limiting, so I'm going to have minus 3, minus 3, plus 3. Uh, and that's kind of what I had here, right? So I've got my moles of A minus plus the amount of base, my moles of HA minus the amount of base. 
but this, I could have just done this to a geometry rather than making this generic thing. So let's plug in our actual values here. And then we'll look at what the first ratio is. So I'm going to plug in my actual values. This is going to be 14.3 plus 3. This is going to be 28.6 minus 3. Then I'm going to have minus log. I'm just going to do this 0.13 divided by 0.26. Do I need to turn that second fraction into, you notice I just do the, the first concentration divided by the first concentration, right, before anything reacts. Do I need to turn those concentrations into moles so that it's relatable? No, because it turns out if I multiply the top by 110 and the bottom by 110, I'm going to get the same fraction anyway. So now, I've got the log of 0.5, and I've got the log, well, let's see, this is 14.3 plus 3, divided by 0.6, take the log of that, I get negative, whoa, oh yeah, that makes sense. So I get a negative, I get a negative value for this log. Okay, for cool. Both for both of yours? Yeah, like for the initial page and the second and the final page. It Because the way that I did it, 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 it worked out. I got a positive. I ended up with a positive thing. Okay. I'm getting positive. I messed up someplace. You all are doing it great. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, I'm going to fucking find it. 1.31? Yeah. For the numbers on the board? Yeah. Cool. Now, there were a lot of weird things going on inside this problem, right? The, this whole idea of needing to recognize that we're calculating pH twice and then taking the difference so the pKa value doesn't matter, that was one nice thing. Recognizing that one is just the ratio, and I could have turned those into moles if it makes you more comfortable, but I'm going to multiply by 110 on top, multiply by 110 on bottom is like doing nothing. Uh, and then dropping my stoichiometry in for the second one. My pH, I got uh, my pH going up, right? I got my delta pH is positive, which does that make sense if we're adding base? Yes, yes. We always want to have some logical check of did my numbers, which is why I was freaking out when I kept getting a negative number. I was like, but I'm not adding acid. So I, I was dropping this negative sign when I was doing it in the calculator. I kept doing, I kept adding the two logs together instead of subtracting them. I did it like three times and I kept getting a negative number and it kept freaking me out. What did you say you got for the final answer again? I erased it on my calculator. I didn't write it down. I got 0.131. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that is how you do that delta pH problem. That delta pH problem is pretty tricky because um, I think most of you haven't done this difference in points to remove a constant since 127. We did that when we were doing like our Rydberg plots or our Beer's Law plots. You know, like the beginning of 127, we did a bunch of problems where it's like, oh, you got a weird constant? Take a difference and you can eliminate the weird constant. Here, the weird constant is the Ka value. Or in this case, the pKa value. We can just make it disappear by taking the difference of points. Questions before we pop over to number 16? Was this just a funny problem, or will we see this on the midterm? Um, or you don't know yet? I don't know yet. i, I got to write the midterm this weekend. It would be reasonable. I might do it in a slightly different way, but something like this would be, I might, uh, I would be more likely to do it where I give you the KA and ask you to find like, there's so many different ways to ask this question that are all the same thing, right? So you can do like I did here where it's you calculate the delta pH with some amount of base. 
I could give you the delta pH and have you calculate how much base you needed to add to make that happen. I could give you the amount, I could give you the pKa and the initial, if I wanted to do that one, I'd have to give you the pKa value. Okay, but there's, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. Um, this gets to the idea of modifying buffers, which we haven't quite gotten to in class. We're going to start talking about it on Monday because you need it for the buffers lab in week eight. I was going to say, yeah, we don't have a week, uh, lab next week. That's week seven. Right. Week eight. That was also another question. So, like, the reason we don't have lab next week is apparently because Friday is a holiday. Yeah, it's just nice to keep everyone on the same sequence. So okay. rather than having, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday do lab and then just Friday, like, everyone's off by a day for a week. But if we're off on Friday, when are we having our, our midterm? Wednesday. It's on the calendar for Wednesday. It's all on Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right, you weren't in class. Yeah, Wednesday. Oh, it's okay. It's on, because it says so on last one. It was yeah, it was Wednesday and Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. So it's all Wednesday this time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's weird that we have Friday off instead of Monday of off to me. But there we go. Um, number 12? 16. That was number 12. Number 16. You bet. See you later. Okay. Uh, number 16. Who I'm wants to read number 16? No. Thanks. Um, C5H5N and C5H5NHCl to produce 200 milliliter buffer solution with a pH of 5.27, and then it wants the mass ratio. Does it give us volumes or anything? Uh, oh, 200 milliliters of the buffer solution. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I guess since we're doing mass ratio, the fact that this has a CL on it is going to matter. And just to be clear, this is a weak base. This is its conjugate acid with a CL. That, it's not like HCl. That CL is just an anion that's making it stable. So when we put it into solution, um, this is going to be a weak base buffer. I can go whoa. I can go ahead and look up. It's on the equation sheet. C5H5N has a, K, a KB value, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 9. I can turn that into a KA, but more importantly, I can turn it into a PKA. I'm just going to do that all at once. It's 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.7 times 10 to the minus 9, that's my Ka. Take the log of that. That seems too big. 5.23? Hmm. That doesn't seem right. That's what I thought. Oh, I typed it way wrong that time. 5.23 is what you got? OK. Weird. Oh, I guess that makes sense. This KB value means this behaves very poorly as a base, right? The KB value is bigger, is, is a small value. So I guess it makes sense. OK, so I've got my pKa. I'm going to set it up so it's pH equals pKa plus log of concentration of C5H5. I don't think we need the volume divided by C5, H5, and H plus. Okay? Right, now this is something that confuses a lot of people. Um, we've done an example like this in class, but we did it last week and not in terms of buffers. Uh, if we have a weak base titration like this, We have our buffer region. And it's still a weak acid. 
conjugate base system. So I still have a choice. Do I want to do it as a weak acid in water or do I want to do it as a conjugate base in water? People always want to default doing it as a conjugate base as water because it's a weak base. You can still do it as a weak acid because there's still weak acid present. So that's why I can still write pH equals pKa like this. So this Henderson-Hasselbach equation works in any buffer region for a pH and a pKa, whether it's a weak acid or a weak base. Because when you're in the buffer region, there's always weak acid equilibrium present to think about. So we can do it this way. Now this is where it gets weird. Uh, I'm going to, oh, and this is nice, right? My pH and my pKa are close to each other. I should have noticed that when I was like, my calculation is wrong. We're fine. Um, so we're going to have 5.27 equal to 5.23 plus log. And I'm going to switch this since it's the same total volume, right? It's 200 milliliters. I'm going to switch this to be moles of, I'm just going to call it moles of B over moles of BH plus. Right, for a base and its acid. Okay. Do some math. I can solve for the ratio of moles. Where did I put my calculator? Here we go. I know I've got two there. I don't like those as much as this one. 5.27 minus 5.23. I get an I get a positive value, to the power of 10, gets me 1.096 is equal to the moles of my weak base, divided by the moles of my conjugate acid. And I said, well, okay, how do I get this to a ratio of masses? Well, I can recognize that moles times molecular weight equals grams. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply by the molecular weight. That looks weird. I don't know why I did sub W there. So I need the molecular weight of C5H5N. And then I'm also going to multiply the bottom by, let's do it like this. I like this better. I'm going to multiply the bottom by the molecular weight of C5H5NHCl. I need that Cl in the solid, even though it completely disassociates. So this is going to be the same as doing 1.096 times molecular weight divided by molecular weight. So I take my mole, my, my ratio of moles here, I multiply by my ratio of molecular weight, and that should give me a ratio of masses. This is kind of interesting. Right? So we're just using this 127 idea. And this is kind of interesting because when we go from ratio of moles to ratio of concentration, we do nothing because they're in the same total volume. But when we go from ratio of moles to ratio of molecular weight, we have to do something with those molecular weights because the molecular weights are not the same. Let me just call this molecular weight one, molecular weight two, so you don't just divide them out by each other. Right? Since those molecular weights are not the same, we have to multiply by this extra thing. And I should do it, I should have done it on both sides. So let me go ahead and do that over here too, right? Wouldn't it be the flip? Yeah. You'd multiply both sides by the molar weight of the CL and then divide, right? If you're doing it to both sides, wouldn't it be a flip? No, no, no. So like if I if I divide this over, now it cancels out. Right? You do the same thing to both sides. It's like if I had if I had three equals x, and then I could multiply this by five, and I could multiply this by five. That's like Oh, 5x. Okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Right. So it's like, um, yeah. I, yeah. I see. So 
Again, bringing back some 127 ideas that we might not remember, we can turn the moles into molecular, we can turn the moles into grams by multiplying by molecular weight, which means I also have to take that ratio and multiply by my molecular weight ratio. When I say it, everyone's like, yeah, of course. But thinking of it on your own, a little bit more difficult. When you mentioned that, like you, that the KV was really low, so it was performing not as well as a base, a base and that's why the so it's behaving better as an acid. Because there was like there was something in the um, in lecture today where I was getting like a PK that I just felt weird. It was for um, it was for HCN. Yeah. Yeah. That thing is a terrible acid. Okay. So that's why it was, because then I got like a pK of 9.21. Yep. Like, that's up. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that happens for, for, a hydro, for HCN hydrocyanic acid. Okay. That thing is not a very good acid. It behaves better. CN minus is better as a base than it is as an acid. Okay. So then we would just, because it was like, but we can still treat it still as a. Still treat it all the same way. Okay. Still, it still behaves as a weak conjugate system. Okay. Okay. Are we ready to look at 5.2? Thank you. Okay, you bet. See ya. Thank you. Okay. 5.2 number 4. What is 5.2 number 4? Say. Everyone else is taking up. They're like, let's not do that next week. You can wait. Uh, okay. Food. Oh, that's fair. Bye. See ya. Preparation of a buffer from solid. Um, describe how you would make one liter of buffer with a pH of 7 using only solid materials and deionized water so that the concentration of weak acid in the buffer is 0.1 more. And then the Total concentration or the concentration of weak acid? Concentration of weak acid. Is 0.1 molar? Yeah, and then it gives three solid chemicals. What solids does it give us? NaH2PO4, Na2HPO4, <coughs> and Na3PO4. So we're looking at a sodium phosphate problem. We got to get the pKa's for each of these. Um, I unfortunately only have them as Ka's. Um, problem number four. Yeah. Yeah. This thing is going to be just a base in water, so that's not going to be. And then what else do we have? Um, Are we supposed to use two solids? Yeah, that's, that's it. It's asking for choice of solid, mass of first chemical. Okay, so this is like uh, number nine. So we don't have any strong titrant we're using. We're only using weak acid and its conjugate. So the real trouble here is, so this is like number nine. I think that was number nine. So we're going to have pH is equal to pKa plus log of A minus over HA where we know what we want HA to be. We want HA to be 0.1. So I can go ahead and just erase that and put 0.1 in there. Right? And I know this is 7, so I can, well, let me, let me not erase that. Let me rewrite it. Right, so I can start plugging in different bits of things that I know. My pH 7, I don't know what my pKa is yet. And I've got a log of my A minus over 0.1. So if I could figure out which conjugate system to use, I just plug that pKa in and solve for A minus. Then I have to convert them to masses by doing one liter times that to get to moles. So how do you decipher which one to use? Which solid? i got to look at some equilibriums to figure out. So if I look at, since I don't have H3PO4, I can look at H2PO4 plus water. 
goes to HPO4 plus H3O plus. That's one equilibrium I could set up. Mm -hmm. This equilibrium would have a Ka value. This is for the second proton. So this would have a Ka value of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. Second proton or first proton? Because second that's the proton. first protonation, correct? Well, this... Oh, H2. Oh, it's an H3, my bad. Yeah, that's why the sodium on it is, is thrown it's off your count. Yeah, it's H3PO4. Or I could set up this one, which is HPO4, 2 minus, plus H2O, goes to PO4, 3 minus, plus H3O plus. And this has a Ka of... 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13. 4.2. Now, in both of these, I've got, like, each one needs two compounds. The weak acid and its conjugate base. Weak acid and its conjugate base. And I've got all, I've got these all as choices. So now I just have to figure out, well, which, which one do I want to use? You tell me, which one do you want to use? What if you used this one? What would your, what would your pKa be? I gotta calculate it. I know it's gonna be something on the around 12. Yeah, it's gonna be bigger. 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13 log. Okay. Oops, I did 42. 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13. 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13 log. 12.4. 12.37. That's way far away from 7. Let's check the other one. 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8 log. 7.2. This one is going to be the conjugate system we want to use. We're going to want to use H2PO4 with HPO4 for our conjugate system. So I'm going to have 7.2 in here. And we just want that one because it's closer to the pH of 7. What was the important, important thing to make this work that we talked about today? The plus or minus one. Yes. Right? So if this is our buffer system, it will work for pHs that are 7.2 down to 6.2 up to 8.2. Okay. And that number is in that range. So the other one wouldn't be in the buffer region. The other one isn't in the buffer region. That 12.37 we have, this one, if this, if this was instead of 7, if that was like 11.6, this other system would work better. Because yeah. this works from 11.37 up to 13.37. Okay. Technically, at 13.37, we'll start to have some issues with exasmal approximations, but we're not going to worry about that right now because that's not what we're looking at. Can you solve for A minus? Uh, yeah. Yep. Right, so at this point, we do 7 minus 7.2. 7. Minus 7.2 to the power of 10, and I'm going to get 0 0.631 is equal to A minus over 0.1. And that's going to get me A minus concentration is equal to 0 0.0631. H A concentration is equal to 0.1. Since it's one liter of solution, those concentrations are also the number of moles. And now I have to use the molecular weight. So my H A is this one, so I do times the molecular weight. And A minus is this one, so I do times the molecular weight. Do I need to show the math, or is that OK? Since the, my HA is this compound, uh -huh. I'm going to do 0.1 times 1 liter times that molecular weight. And that will get me the grams. Since my A minus is this compound, the Na2HPO4, I do this molarity times 1 liter to get me to moles times that molecular weight to get me to the grams.
how am I going to make it through my next class? Friday, Fridays 4 to 6 is a bit rough. Yeah. I just have to about like every single class. <laughs> What's that? Every class I walk through, I ask the same thing. What time is the um, does the chem sorority do tutor? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think six to eight. Maybe one of them is only seven to eight. But yeah. No, they're later. They're like between six and eight all the time. Okay, that was from a solid. And a lot of the other questions are like from a liquid, or from so, a solid and a liquid. So what would be different? The only thing that's different is this last step. You're going to find the concentrations the same way, mm -hmm. and you're going to do concentration times mm -hmm. volume to get the moles. Mm -hmm. Once you have the moles of each thing, if it's a liquid, you're going to do moles divided by molarity to get volume of, of what we call the stock solution needed. And if it's a solid, you do moles times molecular weight to get the grams of the stock material needed. So it's just that last, last step. So I'll go ahead and write that like down. Like dimensional analysis. Yeah. Okay. Which is why I haven't done it in class very much, because we're just going to get molarity times volume equals moles. And we're going to do moles times molecular weight <laughs> equals grams. Or moles times 1 over molarity Right, and so that's molarity of the stock solution, so it's different than this molarity at equilibrium. I'll even put in the Q on here. Right. Our equilibrium molarity, which is these things. This is our A at equilibrium. This is our H2A. That's our HA at equilibrium. Right, so it's just that last, last step is the only thing that changes, and it's just unit analysis at the end. process for like writing out the equation of KA is comparing, comparing yeah. PKAs to find which one to use. Yeah, yeah. Everything else you comes out the same. One above or minus one region. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? Hi, good. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, I think it was absent the day you told us which two solubility rules you were supposed to remember. What were them? Sodium compounds are always soluble. Mm -hmm. Nitrate compounds are always soluble. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, um, one of those things where it's just like chloride compounds are usually soluble. There's a mm -hmm. bunch of also like usually solubles. Mm -hmm. If you ever see something and you're like, hey, does this form a solid? There's no KSP for it. Like the, the real answer is check the KSP. Okay. If the KSP is small, it forms a solid. If the KSP is large, it disassociates in water. Okay. But if you're ever looking at something and you're like, I don't know, I thought this was supposed to be about acid base, but I think a solid's forming. Because mm -hmm. both things can happen. Mm -hmm. I usually don't mean it to happen. I'm usually asking about one phenomena or the other. Just ask. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Okay. okay. Last one, 12D. Did anyone, did the person who asked about 12D took off? Definitely not. We'll save that for Monday, I think. Yeah. What is problem 12? May I look at it real yeah. quick? You don't have to read it. Wow. Okay. Buffer A is that. Buffer B is that. Buffer C is that. Assume one liter for each buffer. Find the pH, find the pH, find the pH. And then modify the buffer, modify the buffer, modify the buffer. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's not that bad. And they were asking about D. So they were doing the first modification of the buffer. <laughs> okay. So I'll go ahead and tell you like the starting of it because the person who left might be hoping to watch it on the video. So let's at least do the setup of it. Okay. And we'll just, 
We'll just do A and D. We'll skip buffer B and buffer C. And I'm going to do it sitting down because I am tired. It's way, it is November hot today. It's so yeah, hot. What's up with that? I thought I was going to pop Thanks, out California. <laughs> like, I was biking to campus this morning at, nine, at like 8 a.m. And I was already like too hot. I had to stop biking so I could take off my but sweater. I and just I was just like, this is insane. Looking at it, 1 over 1, would the first one just become the pH of KA? Yeah, it's at the midpoint already. Okay. But let's still look at it. So we've got, um, this is number, uh, <laughs> uh, number 12, right? And we're just going to look at the part A and part D, which is going to be about buffer A, which is going to be one molarity in H3 with one molarity and H4 plus. I already know I don't care about that Cl minus on the end. I just want to get my weak acid in its conjugate base. So part A is just going to be pH is equal to pKa plus log. And if you already see the train come and you could be like, it's half half, it's going to be the midpoint. It's going to be one over one. This part Zero. is going to be, it's just going to be pH equals pKa, but let's still go ahead and calculate that because we need it for part D. So this is NH3, that's going to be 1 times 9.255. Let's just call it 9.26. That'll be close enough. OK, now part D, right? we're skipping B and C, which are the other buffers. Part D says throw acid on it. Not just any acid, strong acid. So for throwing strong acid on it, what do we have to do? Starts with an S. Stoichiometry. You gotta do some stoichiometry. So let's go ahead and just look at what happens. We've got a particular amount of strong acid we're throwing in. It's 0.1 moles. So I'm gonna look at my stoichiometry for this, and then I'm gonna drop my stoichiometry into the Henderson Hasselbach. Um, it's going to be um, NH3 plus HCl goes to NH4 plus plus uh, Cl minus, right? And the Cl minus is just going to be a spectator. I'm going to rewrite this. I don't care about the Cl. I'm going to write it as H3O plus, and I'm going to write it as H2O because that just makes me happier. The acid completely disassociates. The part that matters is the H3O plus in solution. Now my NH3, since it's one liter of a one molar thing, this is one mole of NH3. I'm not doing millimoles, it's just one mole. My NH4 plus is also one mole of NH4. My H3O plus is 0.1 mole. That's my starting point. I can see my reaction coming, minus 0.1, minus 0.1, plus 0.1. No surprise, adding strong acid remove some of my weak base from solution and convert my weak base into conjugate acid. That ends up being 1.1. Now I can just do the same thing. pH equals pKa plus log. Uh, make sure I get it right. 0.9 over 1.1. I it. Yeah, be careful, right? I it's still because I got a positive still, value. I was like, how the fuck did it go up? It's still acid? base. It's still weak base over weak acid, yeah. right? Because it's still pH equals pKa, conjugate base over weak acid. Don't let the stoichiometry, right? We're always used to oh, products go on top, reactions, yeah. right? This is when we go to the equilibrium. We're doing the acid equilibrium with this equation, so it's still. Weak base over weak acid. Weak base over conjugate acid. Conjugate base over weak acid. Conjugate pair, right? Conjugate base over conjugate acid. That's it, okay. right? We just had to do the stoichiometry. Not so bad. The places where it gets bad is when you start trying to do things super generically and if you remember, I did this earlier, and I was like, oh, why am I doing this to all of you? Where I had, like, 
moles of HA minus moles of, a, of OH minus, and I had moles of A minus yeah. plus. Right, when you do it super generically like that, you lose track of like it's just numbers divided by numbers. Mm -hmm. It's just 0.9 divided by 1.1. Mm -hmm. So, just remembering stoichiometry happens doing the stoichiometry, getting values. Now, if I wanted to, let's see, I think your thing fell asleep so I can't see. Um, if, if I wanted to, I could ask you a meaner question. Do I do that here? There's a chance. <laughs> pH buffer B. Which of the buffers is the smallest percent change? And pH of buffer A. Oh, and then I do it for base being added. I do not do it in this problem. But what you could do is you could say, you make this buffer. How much base to decrease? Oh, there are problems like this. How much base to decrease the pH by 0. 0.5? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. How much base to increase the pH by 0.5? Yeah, totally or how much acid to decrease the pH by 0.5? So we have to calculate our starting one. And then we say, OK, if I want to increase it by 0.5, that would be to like 9.76. And then I'd have to have this moles of H3O plus unknown. So I could solve for that moles of H3O plus unknown. There are some problems we've done like that already. We're essentially doing the thing we did Friday and Monday in class, like last Friday and Monday, of like mole volume to a particular pH. But the big difference here is like all the calculations we've been doing, we've been starting here. This one starts here. And so your distance that you have to travel is going to be smaller than if you traveled all the way from here. Yeah. Technically, you could do this like three different ways because you could do it from your total millimoles and still get to the same point and then just take the difference of the two. But we'll, we'll look at that and it's too late on Friday to talk about that. Right? It's just this idea of well, what, what distance are we traveling. So this one feels different because I've got two non-zero things. So I'm starting someplace along the curve already. Yeah. I'm just looking at like per H, and it says find the pH of buffer A after 0.1 mole of NaOH is added. Is does that become different stoichiometry? Like flip it. That's the pKa, and then add the OH. So that'll cause that'll still cause it to increase, but it'll just yep. Flip so it. our stoichiometry table is going to flip in that case. And when I'm adding OH, when I'm adding NaOH, this thing should be getting smaller. This that thing should be, be getting increasing. bigger. And, and then I that think, would end up flipping. I think it's going to flip the inside. Yeah. I would do the stoichiometry to make sure yeah. that's what it does, but I'm like 95% sure, yeah, it just ends up flipping the inside from the numbers that are given. Because it's just, it's just we have to do a new stoichiometry table. Okay. Okay. What time is it? I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. I think that's all the questions we got time for.